Welcome to jobskillshare.org. This video is going to be part two, remote troubleshooting skills, part two in playlist, remote troubleshooting skills for help desk. We are just started with first learning about remote connecting skills, and we are still doing that part two in this one because remote connecting is the first thing people are going to be starting to asking you question. What kind of tools did you use to help other staff members or what kind of tools do you use in a MSP type of environment, like an IT service type of environment? Uh, if a, a MSP is going to hire you, they're not going to believe in just Zoom stuff, right? They need to know more, a little bit more uh, advanced tool for just like the one, that second one that we talked about, uh, Zuho Assist. So if you're new, go to YouTube, type Job Skill Share, and here just click on Playlist and then click on Remote Troubleshooting uh, Skills. So we're going to be doing part two. So this video is being used by our live members and also uh, our uh, members who are on YouTube. So this is uh, the access that we give to our live members. Uh, we give multiple machines. This, these are all work group machine. Now, if you don't know about the work group, you should really take our live training or maybe take our free help desk training to understand these terms. So in this scenario, let's create a scenario quickly so then we can understand what we're doing. So basically, we talked about two companies, right? In the beginning, we talked about A, so make sure to watch my first part. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. We're going to talk about the second part, B, now. Okay, this company, let's say, is a service provider. We're going to call it MSP. Let's say this is MSP. These are the people, usually a company uh, that that helps other companies. They may hire multiple help desk people, and these help desk personnel are going to help other companies, maybe different companies, right? So the way it works is that these help desk people, uh, then, you know, th this company may have contracts. So contract A is one company, B is this is another company, another company, another company. So you see these help desk people are going to be then remoting into these uh, clients. So one client may say, uh, we want you to just call us and use the Zoom. So that's the, something that you covered in the part A. So they may be okay with just Zoom connection and you help them out. But this company is saying that no, uh, we don't like the Zoom method because what if our company uh, staff members are not available and you have to do something at night, then who's going to let you get into the computer? So let's do a contract and let's do it by you connecting to our machine somehow by using some tools that you guys are using. So MSP usually have tools. So they're going to do, okay, we're using this tool. We're going to install some clients on these machines right here and then help this person at 7 p.m. gets a call from one of these people right here uh, maybe they're working late hours and then the help this person already have access to these machine and boom they just connects right away of course they ask for permission and they tell them but they these people can see that help this is now connected and that's it or they may leave the they, they may leave the building at five and then help this people are going to be coming here and just doing updates fixing computers things like that you know basic fixes right if they require them to do something then the msp will really a person to come over here and that's how it usually works in uh, inside the you know MSP type of environments ID services type of environments but that's not just it you know let's say this is not even MSP this is just a headquarter this is like a big nonprofit and they have multiple IT professionals they're working for this uh, nonprofit or whatever company it is and let's say the clients are there's so many clients inside the company now there's so many desktops and everything inside the company. And from one call, they, one floor, they're going to get a call that, hey, uh, floor one, let's say, they're, they're having some issues. They got some error. Uh, now, of course, they're not going to always walk down to first floor. That's just okay. In the beginning, you may do these kind of things. But, of course, when you have so many people, you don't want to be doing this all the time. So that is where then you have internal tools that people will set up inside the company by using servers or or even the MSP type of tools works over here. It doesn't matter, but they're going to use some type of tool that they will be using it to connect to these staff members or people who even outside go outside. So this is a kind of like a complete remote solution right here. And the first we just talked about basic one here. Now it's a little bit more techy. OK, so. We got a scenario here. We got all these machines. Let's say this, consider this a company right now. And they, let's say they have four uh, staff members multiply by 400. So, <laughs> sorry, they have 400 people, let's say. But we're going to just 
practice on one or two machines, right? So the thing is this, that first of all, you need to understand few things. Now, this is where I'm going to actually move you to the practice lab environment because a lot of people may have access premium members. So if you say that, what are you talking about here? We, we are, we, when we teach you skills, we don't just, you know, throw in applications that has no meaning, right? You have to do something. Whenever you learn something, it has to do something with your job. Like, you know, either you getting a job or you getting better at your job. That's kind of our goal. The goal is not to make a YouTube video only, okay? So here, if I type help this or SCCM with it, you're going to see some positions will have SCCM, uh, you know, coming up on there. You may see this, and a lot of people may start asking question. Okay, if it's showing in the help desk, then why aren't we learning about it? Now, you see, SCCM, everybody knows it's not a software or it's not a, it's not a system that a help desk will be, be implementing. It is something that a system administrator, networking people, mainly that uh, when I say networking, these are the sysadmins kind of people. They're going to implement this or a sys SCCM specialist because they have their own jobs too. They may implement this in the company and then they will let you access a piece of that. A piece is what? A remote tool that I'm talking about. Okay. So they will let you access that and then you as a help desk will be just using that piece. So that's why when you say that I'm seeing this here, why can't I just learn this? It's not required from you. Nobody's going to expect that from you. But you can just tell them that you have some type of training and you have watched some videos and you know what SCCM, and they're going to say, okay, you're going to basically respond that SCCM, mainly I know the remote tool side, I can, I'm pretty good at it, I understand it, I watched some training on it. But of course, they don't expect you to know how to implement this because it requires databases, it requires servers, and it's a big thing, okay? So... This is where I'm going to take you back to the premium lab. And if you are a premium member, you can sh see show retired labs. Uh, what I like about practice lab, they don't just remove their labs. They, should just, they just hide it. So if you show it right here, and if you go all the way down to Microsoft one, and if this is the one right here, administering and deploying system center 2012 configuration manager. If you click on it and just click on the bottom one right here, let's say uh, manage client agent settings in progress so this is the one that i started so when i started you see these machines these are domain controller this is uh you know the sccm server right here sccm is installed so you just power on all of these three and then here you can actually get into the sccm and actually look at it you're not going to be able to do much here the reason for that is that this lab is not designed for remote tools Maybe you will find something in, in the other labs. But I just wanted to tell you that l consider yourself that sysadmin already set up a server for you over here. And if you really want to know that SCCM part that I'm talking about, you just need to get into the one of these servers right here. So I'm going to just demonstrate one for you right now. So if you really want to like touch and feel this SCCM part of remote tools, then this is where it is. Okay, you're going to say yes. And here you're going to click on Configuration Manager Console. So SCCM looks like this. So somebody have already set up this whole thing for you. And then you basically will have access as a help desk person in the company. They will give you access to this right now. Just the Configuration Manager that icon that just you just saw a second ago. You're going to see access to here. Like So I'm going to go back here actually. And go down so so they are gonna give you access to this guy right here so this this icon will show on your desktop you see you can install this this is kind of like a configuration manager tool that they will put on your machine and then they will only give you access to what they will give you access to the uh let me see the as the asset and compliance part right here administrator will have access to this monitoring and depending on what type what level of access you have and how much they do they want to train you on this they will do that most of the people will do this because everybody has a little different way of doing things customized packages and things like that they're going to give you access to this so let's say they're going to give you access to let's say assets and compliance because this is where the devices are then you're going to come here and somebody will call you let's say for example this person windows uh you know seven or they're using 10 or whatever they were using they're going to call you right so all you have is a system like this what i'm trying to explain to you when they say sccm they just want to know as a helpless person do you 
you know this part where you're gonna right click here and you're gonna click on start and then you're gonna click on remote control here now you see there's no remote control available the reason for that is that's because there's no client install on these machines so of course there's more to it than you're gonna right click install client if that doesn't work you need to fix it in the lab and you have to do a lot of things and you need to understand SCCM then and that's why I say don't worry about this stuff don't stress yourself because this is more advanced stuff uh, all you have to know is what SCCM is Watch some videos on on YouTube or you know try to find some information about SCCM remote settings and try to understand it and that's sufficient for you to tell the person in interview because once you talk about this in interview that's what they want to know at least you went out there you know what it is the rest we're going to teach you no worries this is not a big deal right here okay so don't stress yourself about this and don't try to come here in the practice lab and try to make this work because you're not going to be able to work this out on your own this is a little too advanced for you so you're probably going to give up doing this stuff okay so i don't want you to stress yourself on this one but know that that's how companies connect to their clients. So this is the one that I talked about. There's a big nonprofit or whatever company, and they have a lot of com uh, computers in different floors. How do they connect to them while they're working on? They don't just take over their session. They don't black the screen out. They're on their screen. You're on their screen, and you work with them from 8 to 5 p.m., and they go home, you go home, right? But then again, I give you another example of you may be working in an MSP. So now you're working for a big com sorry, for a company that, that are working with many different companies. So usually what they will do, they will use some type of MSP uh, software. So let's say this is a client and you, they already did the contract and everything. So the MSP will be using their own software. Now one software that you can actually try to play around with and do it for free it gives you a lot of different type of features and if you want to learn more you can do that and that's called uh the one that i like is iterian and maybe if you want to open your business in the future you can actually do this kind of stuff so let's say you're going to go to iterian right now like this and we're going to configure this machine so then we can troubleshoot and you know help these this company so we're going to first configure iterian on you can do this on your uh, on your own machines you don't have to be in the lab environment because now you're setting up a system for someone right so for this you do need uh you know uh, to when you create an account you need a business um email again so here you're gonna type your email and then you're gonna pick us because i'm from us if you're in europe you're gonna pick in europe so i'm gonna do that and then i'll let you know uh, once I do this, when I, when I finish this, I am going to log in and show you what it what I mean by this, okay? So you see when I logged into this system, it's uh, designed for MSP. These are like if you want to uh, create your own IT company, then of course they give you many, many different type of, uh, you know, solutions in one application. So you don't have to run around for different type of uh, solutions. So for example, you can do network management where you can scan the whole company machines, uh, the same network, and you can find new systems. You can add users. You can uh, do application deployment. You can do um, bulk installations. You can you can do like uh, procedures, meaning like you can create a script and that can work for you. You can actually deploy antiviruses. You can do help the sticking system you can do so many different things because it's built for IT company right but again I'm not gonna focus on all other features and if you're new to IT don't try to focus on that as well because you're not gonna learn much uh, focus on in this lecture focus on how a company will provide support to their users or an IT company will provide IT support to other companies right so here we we're talking about this system and i can access this from anywhere uh you know anywhere right i can open my local machine right now and open this system and then i can basically remote into this app server 400 meaning if this user or this company have given me uh has done a contract with me to support them now i can basically support them anytime they have issue they're gonna call me and say hey we're having issue with our server app server all this could have 400 machines or 500 machine and whoever call me now as a help this person you will have ability to just get into your system like this and then you will basically click on that machine and then what will happen you will see more options will enable because you just clicked on that machine what can you do now 
you can remote control right here as soon as you click on remote control what will happen it will open up another application and then you will basically connect to that machine so if i show you here i am actually on the app server 400 so that's not a good example that i'm doing try to connect to the same server but if i have a different machine open if i have a different system open i can actually connect to that uh, uh, um, uh, server right now meaning if this this machine is let's say in India and I am in the US I can connect opening up this this system from a web browser and I'll connect uh, download a like a connector and then I'll connect to app server 400 and then I can support the person in India that's how it works if it were, even if it was locally done designed locally meaning all the agents I will just simply go in there and I'm going to basically uh, download a bulk installation or I'll get the software and put it on all of these different machines right here all of these machines right here I'm gonna put that agent and then I'll log into this system online all I have to do is to just log in from anywhere I will I'm gonna click on that machine they got I got a call that I am having an issue I'm gonna click on remote control and boom I'm inside there's so when you click on the remote tool you get to install a software that it's on your machine then so you can easily open it and then connect to the machines that you want to support so let's say this is a company user this could be an IT person as well and now want me to help them because I'm a different company want to help them with something more technical whatever it is they're gonna call us right so as soon as they call us and now because everything is working 24 7 as long as this machine is on internet I logged into my system and I'm just gonna click on connect and here what will happen the session will start and this person will also know, know that I am on that machine so you can see there you go we both got a uh, indication that I am on their machine they got that message and I have my session open right so you can see I'm on I can do certain things I can control lock screen I can do uh, best fit I can change the some of these things right here I can maximize it but look at my uh, see you see right there I am basically moving my mouse so that's how you do re uh, remote support to anywhere in the world right now I can be supporting anybody I like to I mean as long as I have the ability to get more business uh, and you know I can add it to my company I can just talk to or maybe I can even talk to one of my uh, home members that hey you know um, let me support you guys if you really are into IT and you want to practice why don't you start with the home user as long as they allow you to do these kind of things whatever is the option uh, the whatever is the issue then you work on that directly and then you do end session close and here your session is ended and that's how we will see when it's ended okay system you see there there are other things that too file transfer remote tools you can install packages and uh, some of the other things like it can do uh, patch management which is extremely powerful and that's kind of like if somebody call you I'm having a lot of issues or things like that the first thing you want to do is update their machine but most of, most of the time then you need that access again right you need to actually log into their machine you have to do zoom and all that kind of stuff so you don't have to do that anymore right you can come here and with using this type of tools they're more powerful now this is designed for it and IT professionals then you can come here and actually click on that system and then basically either log in directly or just push out that uh, you know that uh, that patch here so when I click on the end the, so you see right here that it's active and look at this right here patch status how many patches are missing six so if I click on it it's gonna go out there and it's gonna say okay it's missing a Firefox update it's missing a, a, a Windows update dot net blah 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 and it's gonna go out and, and 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 actually pick that right so if you come here you can see right here on the top third-party applications and operating system application to me I think this is one of the I like I really like the patch management system so it makes your life very easy all you gotta do is to click on it it will select all of it and then you basically click on install and then that's it it's done after that is done so you see how it's it's like that's how things are done remotely when you're working with uh, IT service providers they have something like this and if you talk about iterian if you now if you let's say you want to try it yourself register it you know go online download the, the the client and put it on one of your lab machine connect back to it play around with this patching and things like that that gives you a little bit idea of how we do things in IT right
so we don't we don't do too much manual stuff these days and that's why people uh, a lot of people ask me hey you know uh, can we just come over and do the hardware type of training i'm like there's no hardware type of training these days you know forget about that you need to learn these things this is what makes you this is what's going to give you a job right there okay ram rom cd uh, cpu or gpu these things are not going to give you a job if you really or if you really want to get that job so this is what is going to make you look different than other people because other people don't know about this stuff so try to learn this this is probably what I, all i can share about the remote stuff if you're really interested in you know, getting your hands dirty with us then of course i prefer you to take our live training and that we really really go into just like what we're doing with one of these members right now they're on these machines and they're connecting back then they ask us questions we tell them about interview questions we give them some technical interview questions throw throw some questions to them they figure things out on their own we really don't do too much with them like you know we don't just spoon feed them we really make them work on these things because that's the real uh you know part of it you got to do things you got to search on your own try to fix things on your own so good luck with that and and let us know if you need any other help and this is it for the remote connecting skills for now